It's not that we are lacking in information today. What we're lacking is focus. Welcome to today's Tapping Solution podcast episode. I'm so excited about this episode. We are going to be talking about a simple two-step process that you can use any day, every day to get calm and focused for your day. Now, this process is the exact process I use every single morning to make sure that I can get rid of all those distractions with uh, you know my three kids, all the other stuff going on in life to make sure that I get calm and present for my day. You can use this at the beginning of your workday to get calm and focused, or you can use this on the weekends to make sure that you are present with your family, with other people. But I find this to be an incredibly important process to make sure that you're getting the most out of yourself, to make sure that you are getting your brain online, to get it calm and focused, and to get your energy up so that you are present, so that you have confidence, so that you're not afraid and and, and, uh, doubting yourself and limiting yourself in different ways. So we're going to talk about how we can use this process to create consistency in our life. Consistency with our emotions, consistency with our productivity and our results in life, because really what we are all looking to do on a daily basis is to create more consistency. We want more consistency with our emotions and that we want to have more happy days than sad days, right? Uh, Of course, the goal is never to eliminate every sad day. Uh, Life will always throw us curveballs. But the more we can be present with life, the more we can control our emotions rather rather than having them control us the more we can be present with life and enjoy life. And so we wanna be able to create this consistency so we can get the most out of ourselves, out of our brain, and so that we can be as present as possible and get the best results we can. Now, let me explain a little bit about why it matters so much to be calm in the morning. And, And really what I always focus on first when I sit down to do this morning process is to know that it is so important for me to be calm as I go into my day essentially because of how our brains evolved, right? Now, for those of you who follow us here at The Tapping Solution, you know you've heard us talk about the amygdala. Uh, If you've heard about this before in other places, this will still serve as a really good reminder. It's something I have to remind myself of every day. It's to remind ourselves that our brains evolved with one primary goal in mind, which is survival, right? So our brain will always focus on the negative. It will always search for what is wrong to try to keep us safe. I know for, for years we've used the example of the tiger uh, in the tall grass. And you know, just imagine uh, thousands of years ago, you're uh, the caveman or whatever it might be, or just thousands of years ago, just a regular man walking and and there's a little bit of movement in in the tall grass and you react and run away. If you don't have that fight or flight response, if you're not constantly looking for what might go wrong, as opposed to just strolling along happily, well then you get eaten by the tiger, right? As opposed to those who survived really thousands of years ago were probably the most negative people because they were always looking for what was wrong, right? That's really just survival instincts. Uh, I think deer, I mean, I live here in Connecticut, I think deer are always an amazing example of that fight or flight response and that they are so attuned to what is going on around them because they have had so many predators in their history that they are very aware of what might be out there. And so it's important for us to remember that as modern as we are today, we still have these really old parts of our brain that keep us from moving forward in the way that we want. And the amygdala is one of those things that is great to have. You know, it's great to have if you're going to go across the street and you suddenly realize that there's a car coming and you stop or jump out of the way. You want to have that to survive. But unfortunately, our amygdala triggers for so many different things in the world right now. You know, it can get triggered from uh, an email you get from somebody, from just thinking about what might go wrong, from what somebody says. We have all of these things that trigger that fight or flight response that literally make us feel like it is a life or death experience when in reality it is not. It, you know, for for most of us here living in the first world who are lucky enough to always have a home or a roof under our head, water, food, Uh, survival is not the same as it was thousands of years ago. And so even though we are safer than we've ever been before, we still constantly have this amygdala firing on a regular basis. And now the challenge is that when the amygdala fires because of some type of perceived response, sorry, some type of perceived threat out there, what happens is the prefrontal cortex, which is the more modern part of our brain that is responsible for uh, decision-making, it is what allows us to see the future consequences of a decision 
decision that we make now. I'll give you an example. Have you ever had it be that you kind of lose your temper, get really angry at somebody, and all of a sudden you calm down later on, you go, oh man, I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I lost control. Um, that's kind of hurt my relationship with this person. That's because in that moment when that, when that fight or flight response is, is there and that amygdala is triggered, our prefrontal cortex goes offline. And so we're not thinking about what are the consequences of our actions of what we're doing here. Now, that's just one example to kind of make it a little bit more clear. But really what matters is that the more our amygdala is triggered, the more we are in fear, in self-doubt, uh, in any of these negative emotions, the, the less we're able to access our prefrontal cortex and really be the best versions of ourselves. We're not able to make good decisions. We're not able to, to look at all the different options and see what might be best and move forward in that direction. We're really just not our full selves. Right? And so it is so important for us in the beginning of our day to actually make sure that we are bringing our brain into as calm of a state as possible so that we can access our higher resources, specifically our prefrontal cortex on a daily basis. And so often, I've used this example before. Um, let me share this. So just imagine that you're getting onto an airplane. And uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. You're sitting on an airplane. And as you're sitting there on the airplane, Pilot comes running on and he's all sweaty. You know, you're wondering why you haven't taken off yet. He's all sweaty, he looks back and then runs into the cockpit, comes up onto the uh, onto the PA a minute later and and says, you know, oh, geez, sorry guys, I'm just, uh, you know, I was running around. I was really rushed this morning. Lots of stuff going on with the kids. You know, I'm not going to go through my regular checks. I'm just going to, you know, pull back and we're just going to take off. I'm sure everybody on that plane would be like, uh, can we slow it down and do our checks and make sure that we get to our destination properly? But the way that that pilot comes onto the plane is the way most people go into their days. They don't actually stop to calm things down, to check things over, to make sure that they're going in the direction that they want, that everything's functioning the way they want. We just kind of move into our day. We just go, you know, we have the hecticness of the morning. We sit down at our computer to work or whatever type of work you're doing. And you just go with it without really stopping to be present and notice what you're actually feeling. Because so often we bring in a lot of emotions, a lot of things that either happen in the morning or things that we're just carrying from previous days into our work day or into our day. And so it's so important to us for us to make sure that we actually take a moment to pause, to do some tapping. Of course, I'm going to recommend tapping and to calm down that amygdala, that fight or flight response to bring safety into our mind and body as much as we can. Now, another thing I'll mention here is why is it so important to actually be focused and to be focused specifically on particular tasks in mind, not multitasking. I know, I feel like growing up, uh, you'd always hear about multitasking. Oh, this person was a great multitasker. They could, if they could get more done, right? They could get twice as much done because they could multitask. The reality is today, and research shows that multitasking is not something that you want to do. I think there's a very, very small percentage of the population that can actually multitask properly or well. The rest of us, the whatever it was, like 95% of people do a lot better when they are focused on particular tasks. And a, a belief that I have today is that it's not that we are lacking in information today. What we're lacking is focus. What we lack is focus. And so the primary thing that we want to focus on and, and improve in our lives is not you know, getting new information or getting the next little bit of information that will give us that little edge to improve. It's to go, how can we take everything that we know right now and actually focus and implement things better? Focus is such an a difficult skill to master, especially nowadays with all the distraction that there is in the world with uh, social media, with our phones, with constant emails, with constant interruptions. And so the more you can actually focus, the more you'll actually want to, you'll be able to get done in life. Again, as opposed to multitasking. Let me read a couple of research studies that, I, that I've found that I think are really fascinating about multitasking. So one of them said that a study at the University of London found that participants who multitasked during cognitive tasks experienced IQ score declines that were similar to what they'd expect if they had smoked marijuana or stayed up all night. Now, I don't know about you. I know that when I stay up all night, I am quite useless. Uh, my kids are a little bit older now. They're, they're 9, 11, and 13. But when they were little, didn't sleep a lot. Really tough to, to be focused when you lack sleep. And that's what it's just saying that multitasking does. It actually lowers the IQ level to that of an eight-year-old child. So just imagine when you're trying to multitask, do too many things, you're actually 
bringing your brain potential of, or you're bringing your brain potential to that of an eight year old child. Not exactly what we're looking for, right? So another thing, another study said researchers at the University of Sussex in the UK compared the amount of time people spend on multiple devices, such as texting while watching TV, to MRI scans of their brains. They found that high multitaskers had less brain density in the anterior cingulate cortex, a region responsible for empathy as well as cognitive and emotional control. One of the reasons why I try to keep my kids off of social media, why I don't allow them to have TikTok and different things like that, is that it does stunt the part of the brain that is responsible for emotional control, for empathy, really important things here as humans. So those research studies are basically saying that when we're multitasking, that we are limiting our brain function and our ability to our IQ, and it is lowering our EQ, right? Our emotional quotient, our emotional uh, ability to our ability to emotionally control ourselves and have empathy in the world. So really important that we actually be calm and focused, and that we not be multitasking uh, in numerous directions. So. Uh, really what we find is that when, when we when we are emotionally distracted, meaning we are stressed about something else or anxious about something in the future or overwhelmed about how many problems we need to solve, we can not fully focus, right? So if you want to try to get the most out of yourself in a day, as opposed to being distracted or kind of just getting through a day, I'm sure you've had days where you work eight, nine, 10 hours and you get to the end of the day and you feel like you really just didn't get a lot done and you feel like, and you've had other days where you work three or four hours and you felt like you just got amazing things done because you were able to focus. I think we put too much emphasis nowadays on how many hours we work. I know I put that pressure on myself in the past as an entrepreneur to say, oh, I got to work my eight hours. You know, uh, It's kind of an arbitrary number that we put there. But really what I try to focus on more than anything is how many productive hours, how many hours I have that I'm focused and actually doing the things that matter that actually move the needle forward, not only in my business, but also in the impact that I can make with other people uh, in being present and being myself as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to share this two-step process process. Um, for those of you who know my Tapping Solution Planner, this is a process that I have in my Tapping Solution Planner that I do every single day. And what this process does is it allows me to be calm and focused and present for my day. So here's how it's going to go. So the first thing that we want to do, the first part of that process we want to do is we want to calm the amygdala down. Remember, we talked about how when that amygdala is triggered, that prefrontal cortex, is not as resourceful. We're not able to access it as much. So we don't make as good of decisions. And we are stuck in this fight or flight response where we're just, we're just not ourselves. We're not able to, to get as much done. And so what the research shows uh, about tapping is that when we actually tap on these meridian points of our body, it actually sends a calming signal to that amygdala in the brain, lets it know it's safe, that it can calm down, and it allows that prefrontal cortex to come back online so we can just be ourselves and be as present as possible. I think that is so much of the goal. I know so many people limit themselves because they, they, they're they not able to be present, they doubt themselves, they worry about what other people think, and that is, that is natural, it's human nature, but the more we can get ourselves to be present, the, the less we can be stuck in fear of what other people say or how we doubt ourselves, the more we are able to grow uh, in the world and, and be ourselves regardless of what other people think. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to go ahead and ask yourself, and this is you can write this down. Uh, if you have my tapping solution planner, you can see it in there, but you can write this down right now. You don't need my planner or you don't need any planner. Just write this down on a piece of paper or just follow along. I want you to ask yourself, and this is what you do in the morning. Am I feeling any negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, overwhelm, anger, resentment, sadness, or any other negative emotions? Right? You want to ask yourself this in the morning because so often we do not stop to be present with ourselves, to ask ourselves, you know, what am I feeling right now? You know, is this the energy I want to bring into my day? Sometimes we, we just feel like we don't have control of our emotions, but the reality is that we do. And the more we can be present with what, we ha what we're feeling, especially when we're feeling a negative emotion, and we can clear that emotion, the more quickly we can go back into having some type of positive emotion. Again, it's human to go through different emotions, to be upset about something and to release it. I don't know of anybody who doesn't go through that process, but the, what the goal is to be able to process things as quickly as you can and go back into those emotions that really make you feel good. Because not only does it affect your ability to be productive, science and research shows how much it affects your immune system. I think I was uh, listening 
I'm listening to Tony Robbins' new book right now that just uh, came out a little while back or uh, recently, uh, talking about how even feeling anger for a few minutes can can throw off your immune system for as much as five hours, right? So we want to try and get back into being in a healthy state, healthy state of mind as quickly as possible. So again, asking yourself in the morning, first thing, am I feeling any negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, overwhelm, anger, resentment, sadness, or any other negative emotions? And then what you want to do, which is what we do with tapping all the time, is we want to calibrate how strong that emotion is on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is that it's really strong. So 10, uh, anger would be like, you're almost you're out of control, probably difficult to actually sit down and be present with it to really write it down because you are just in a rage. And zero is like, no, I'm not angry about anything right now. I'm not angry right now at all. So you want to calibrate so we can see how we're feeling after the tapping process. And next, what you're going to do before we get to the tapping is I want you to ask yourself, what positive emotion do you want to choose to bring into this day instead? I choose different emotions on different days. Some days, for example, if I'm recording a podcast or a tapping meditation or a tapping sushi app or uh, doing a video like this, I try to, I tap in and choose that I want to be present and joyful, right? I want to be present and joyful. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I want to be present for other people so that I can serve and help people as best I can. There's other days where I just want to be calm and focused, uh, you know, so we get to choose the emotion that we bring into every single day. So we want to first first ask ourselves what negative emotion we're feeling, and then we want to choose what positive emotion we want to feel instead. Even if you don't think, if you're really angry, it's going to be tough to say, oh, I want to be joyful. You know, you can say it, and then we'll say, okay, we'll say it, and then we'll get there, right? So then we're going to go ahead and actually do some tapping. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and take a deep breath in all together and breathe out. And we can start off by tapping on the side of the hand. Now, if you're new to tapping, you don't know how to tap, uh, I'd recommend downloading our Tapping Solution app. Really easy in the App Store or Google Play or go to our website at thetappingsolution.com or just search how to tap here uh, on, uh, uh, on YouTube or, or anywhere else. So tapping on the side of the hand, even though I'm feeling, and then you fill in the blank of what that emotion is. So even though I'm feeling uh, anger or frustration, whatever it might be, because, and you can say what it might be. So for me on any given morning might be, you know, even though I'm feeling frustrated because the kids just took forever to get ready going to school, and then we say, I acknowledge and accept how I feel. Okay, so you're going to fill in the blank for yourself. So even though I'm feeling, just repeat after me when I say that, because I acknowledge and accept how I feel. And again, still on the side of the hand, even though I'm feeling Because, and fill in that blank, I acknowledge and accept how I feel right now. Then we're going to move to the eyebrow point. You can tap on one side, both sides, whatever you prefer. So tapping on the eyebrow point, all this, and fill in that blank with that emotion. Side of the eye, it's so overwhelming. Under the eye, I don't want to feel this way. Under the nose, I want to release this emotion. Chin point because it's limiting my body and mind. Collarbone point, all this and fill in that blank again with what you're feeling right now. Under the arm, again, repeating after me, all this, and fill in that blank with that emotion. Top of the head, I want to release this emotion now. Eyebrow point, but it can be so difficult to release this. Side of the eye, I feel in every cell in my body. Under the eye, why should I have to release this? Under the nose, it's not easy to let this go. Chin point, all this emotion in my body.
column and point all this and fill in that blank with your emotion in my body. Under the arm, I choose to stop and breathe in this moment. Top of the head and let my body and brain know that I am safe. Eyebrow point, allowing safety into my body right now. Side of the eye with every breath that I take. Under the eye, all this emotion in my body. Under the nose, choosing to release it now. Chin point, what if I could release this and choose a positive emotion? Cobble point, I want to shift my energy. Under the arm and not let this negative emotion derail my day. Top of the head, so I choose to stop and breathe in this moment. Eyebrow point, the emotion I choose instead is, and repeat that and fill in that blank for you. Side of the eye, I choose this new emotion for my day. Under the eye, the emotion I choose for today is. Under the nose, I know my day will be much more enjoyable with this emotion. Chin point, and I can choose to feel this way. Cobble point, all is well. Under the arm, I am safe. Top of the head. I am loved. And just stop there and take a deep breath in and breathe out. And then move your body a little bit and just notice what you're feeling in your body. Notice how that energy might have shifted. Maybe you're doing this first thing in the morning uh, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're doing this in the middle of your day. And whenever you're doing it, you can use the tapping to stop. Notice what you're feeling. Notice what Negative emotions might be triggering that amygdala, uh, keeping you from being your full and present self, and tap to release those, and then tap in a new positive emotion that you want to choose for yourself instead, an emotion that just feels more enjoyable to begin with, and also an emotion that allows you to be more uh to be able to access your prefrontal cortex more easily rather than having that amygdala derail your day and, and set you off course. Now, just doing that alone in the morning can transform your day. And one of the things you'll notice at times, I mean, there's some days I come to my office and I sit down at my desk and, and I feel some overwhelming negative emotion and I, and I have to tap it out and, and release it. There's other days where I come and I sit down and I go, you know what, I feel, I feel good today. But I still choose to do the positive tapping to choose what emotion, what positive emotion I want to bring into my day, or I'll just tap in, just focus, just saying, you know, I choose to be calm and present with my day. I choose to be calm and present with my day. I choose to be focused. So I just go through and do some of that positive tapping right there with that tapping process. But again, super important to notice to stop in the beginning of our day, to acknowledge what we're feeling, to release any negative emotions, and then to choose a new positive emotion at the beginning of our day so that we can actually be calm and focused and access our higher resources of our brain to get the most out of ourselves in a day. And to make sure that we don't have one of those days where we spend hours going through and kind of staring at that to-do list and not really moving ourselves focus, moving ourselves forward in the direction that we want. So that is step one of the process that I do every single day. Step two, I do specifically to build confidence and to release self-doubt and fears of rejection, right? There's two ways that we can feel judgment either either by judging ourselves, the way we doubt ourselves, the beliefs we have about ourselves, or we doubt that we'll be able to work towards this big goal that we're working towards, whether that's writing the book or recording the podcast or um, you know, uh, talking to the boss, asking for a raise, you know, speaking up in a meeting, whatever that might be that where you where you might be doubting yourself, 
right? We want to build the confidence to be able to have the courage to be our full selves. I don't believe that anybody, you know, I believe that uh, some of us are, are more shy or more open than others, but I believe that everybody has the ability to be present with somebody else when they choose to be, right? Some people are introverts, some people are extroverts, and an introvert can still be, you know, present. I mean, I know a lot of amazing speakers who speak on big stages who are introverts. They, they go out there, they, they're present, and they go back to needing that time, that recovery time. And there's extroverts who like being extroverted and open all the time or being present with people all the time. That does not affect your ability to be present. What affects your ability to be pr present very often is your the ways that you doubt yourself and also the fears that you have of rejection of other people. So basically, what you worry that other people will think or or say about you can limit you from showing up as your full self in whether, again, example of speaking on stage or putting your voice out there on a podcast, on a, on, um, on a YouTube video, uh, writing a book, or just sharing and speaking up in a meeting or with other colleagues in whatever work environment that you're in. Right, We can worry too much about what other people think about us, especially in the social media age where we're constantly comparing ourselves. And so what we want to do in this second part of the process is to build that confidence to be present in ourselves on a daily basis. So I want you to take a second to think about how do you doubt yourself and how does that self-doubt limit you? Right. So what goals do you aspire to achieve? You know, what, what, what do you achieve to uh, what do you aspire to achieve in your life, but you keep not taking action or moving forward because you doubt that you can do it or that you're worthy of doing it, right? That you're not good enough to do those things. Have you ever said, you know, I'd love to be like that, but I just, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. So what is it? What, what ways do you limit yourself? And don't, don't second guess yourself. Just notice what comes up for you when you ask yourself that question. You might immediately know, yeah, I know exactly how I doubt myself, or you might have to stop and pause and think about it for a second. Right? So what are they? How do you doubt yourself? You can you know, write that down or just think about it for yourself. Just notice in what ways you doubt yourself. Right? And, and the second part of that is who do you fear will judge you or reject you in some way if you put yourself out there or take action towards creating what you want? <clears throat> right? So if you try to lose the weight or start a business, or if you ask that person out on a date, or ask for the raise, or go for the new job, who do you worry will judge you or reject you for doing that? Whose opinion are you worried about? Is it a family member, parents, brother, sister, kids? Is it an extended family member, an aunt and uncle? Is it a friend? You know, If you put yourself out there in some way, are your friends gonna judge you? Is it just your general community? Is it your church? Who do you worry is going to judge you in some way if you step out and try to do something that you aspire to do? You know, very often we can not lose weight because we think, oh, well, if I lose that weight, you know, my sister's going to judge me. and She's going to think, who do you think you are getting skinny, right? So just notice who is it that if whatever goal you're thinking about that you worry is going to reject you or judge you in some way if you go ahead and do that, right? Now, the second thing is I'm going to ask is, what do you choose to believe about yourself instead that will empower you to be at your best, right? What do you choose to believe about yourself instead that will empower you to be at your best? It's something I do every single morning. I write it down in my planner. I write down something that I choose to believe about myself that it might be the exact opposite of what my, uh, my self-doubts were or my fears of rejection are, but it's something that I believe to choose about myself. Because remember, our beliefs about ourselves are really just beliefs. It's what we choose to believe. You know, one of the things uh, I like to remind myself of is, is something to think about for yourself is that if you are – if the whole world is telling you that you are amazing at something and that you're so gifted and so strong and whatever the case may be, but you don't believe it and you believe that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, you're not strong, you're not going to move your life forward in the direction you want. And on the flip side of that, if the whole world is saying you're not good enough and doubting you and thinking, what a dumb idea, what are you doing, who do you think you are, but you believe in yourself, are you going to take action? Absolutely, right? We have so many examples in history of people who were doubted, who were ridiculed for their ideas or beliefs, and they pushed forward and had amazing improvements or discoveries in the world because of what they believed in themselves. And really, that is all that matters is what we believe about ourselves. And so what I'm going to say is in that morning process that you choose what you're going to believe about yourself going into that day that will empower you to be at your best. 
right? That's going to empower you to be at your best. And sometimes you might write this down. And again, when you write it down, you might not believe it at first, but don't worry, write it down, notice it for yourself. We can go ahead and, and tap on it. Again, imagine that there are no limitations, that you were the confident, self-assured person that would go after those dreams, right? Who didn't worry or care about what other people thought or said about you, that you were so self-determined you know, what would you believe about yourself if you were that person? What would you say to yourself? Just write that down. And, and if you want to think, you know, one way that that can help is, is to write down and start with an I am statement. So you can say I am and fill in the rest of that. Now, your current statement, your current belief might start off with an I am or I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough. But when you choose to believe or you choose a new belief, you can say oftentimes, so you might, it might not feel congruent to just say, I am smart. And go, oh, and I don't know if I really am. You can say, I choose to believe that I'm smart. I choose to believe that I'm good enough, right? Important to actually go ahead and acknowledge the beliefs that we have about ourselves and to actually choose new beliefs. And so if you have that in mind, we're going to go ahead and do some tapping together. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tap on those limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves, those self-doubts that we have, those fears of rejection that we have. We can start off with those limiting beliefs, that self-doubt, that, that negative self-talk that we have about ourselves. And just again, just notice what belief you have about yourself. And we can go ahead and start tapping on the side of the hand. Remember, just like always, repeat after me. And, and just like we did in the last round, we're gonna, I'm going to leave some blanks in there for you to fill in what is right for you because I don't want to say what I might be believing. It's really about what you believe about yourself at any given moment that you want to acknowledge and, and work to release, right? So tapping on the side of the hand, even though I believe that I am, and just fill in that blank with that negative belief, that self-doubt you have about yourself. Even though I believe I am, and fill in that blank, I acknowledge and accept that this is just a belief. And again, on the side of the hand, repeating after me, even though I believe that, and fill in that blank, I acknowledge and accept that this is just my current belief. And again, on the side of the hand, even though I doubt myself and believe that, Fill in that blank. I'm open to shifting my current belief. We'll go to the eyebrow point, again, repeating after me. I doubt myself. Side of the eye, sometimes I don't think I'm good enough. Under the eye, or maybe smart enough. under the nose or capable enough. Chin point, or maybe I think I'm too old or too young. Collarbone point, but I have all these beliefs and ways that I doubt myself. Under the arm, many of, many of those beliefs were taught to me in my childhood. top of the head. So I choose to stop and acknowledge those beliefs right now. I brought point. The way I doubt myself is I believe that I am and fill in that blank. Side of the eye. That doesn't feel like a belief. It feels like the truth. under the eye and just say that negative belief. I am and fill that in. Under the nose, I doubt myself so much. Chin point, but a part of me wants more for myself. Common point, so I want to choose something new for myself. Under the arm, even though I worry about other people rejecting me. Top of the head, I worry about what others will think or say. I brought point, if I choose to show up differently in the world.
side of the eye, but I choose to pause and breathe in this moment. Under the eye to acknowledge that I am human. Under the nose that many of my doubts and fears of rejection come from my past. point from experiences that taught me that I wasn't enough. Column point, but I want and choose something new for myself now. And here's where we're going to say that positive belief. Tapping out under the arm, I choose to believe that and fill in that blank. Again, on the top of the head, I choose to believe that and fill in that blank. Moving to the eyebrow point, I am enough. Side of the eye, just as I am. Under the eye, and I am choosing to become stronger every day. Under the nose, I'm choosing to become more confident every day. Chin point, I am choosing to be more of myself every day. Call one point, because I am enough just as I am. Under the arm, so I choose to be present today. top of the head to let go of my limiting beliefs in the ways that I doubt myself. Eyebrow point to acknowledge and notice when I'm feeling or fearing rejection from others. Side of the eye because I am enough just as I am. Under the eye, so I choose to be present today. Under the nose, I choose to be present with myself and with others. Chin point, because I get to choose how this day goes. Column point, so I choose to believe that I am. Again, one more time under the arm, that positive belief. I choose to believe that I am and fill in that blank. Top of the head, because I am enough today and every day. And just stop there and take a deep breath in and breathe out. And just notice the energy of what you feel. Let's go back in, go back and actually uh check in and calibrate what we're feeling. I know actually in the first round, we forgot to check back in with what we were feeling. We always want to calibrate and go, well, how strong was that belief that we had in the beginning or that emotion that we had? How strong was it from zero to 10? We want to calibrate at the end. So, you know, in the first example, we said if we were at a level 10 of anger, and then all of a sudden we can calibrate afterwards and notice where we're at now. And then we can also calibrate with how strong a belief might be. So if in the beginning uh, of this round, if we calibrated to say, you know, how strong that self-doubt is in yourself or how much you fear rejection, we want to calibrate again to say, how strong is that, right? So how strong is that belief that you're not enough? How strong is that belief that uh, others will reject you? And you want to calibrate at the end so you can actually see the shift and feel the shift in your body so you can notice that for yourself. Now, again, there in that second round with that part two of this morning tapping process, Took a little bit longer, right? I, I, if if you have some negative beliefs that you're feeling in that day, or ways that you're limiting yourself, or feeling self doubt or fears of rejection, you might take a little more time to be present with what you're feeling to release those and to choose a new positive belief that you want to take into the day. If you come into the day and you're full of energy and you're 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 not doubting yourself, you're not worrying about what somebody else is going to say, you can still just stop and choose a positive belief, a positive affirmation, a positive belief that you want to tap in. There are, there are days where this morning process can take me five or 10 minutes, took us a little bit longer just now, or there's days where it can take 30 seconds, a minute of just one round of tapping in on a positive emotion, one round of tapping in on a positive belief. But what is critical and important is that you actually make the time every morning to stop and be present with what you're feeling 
to be present with any negative emotions that you're feeling, to be present with any self-doubts that you may be feeling, to be, to be present with any ways that you feel or fear that you're going to be rejected so that you can stop those things from limiting you throughout the entire day so that you don't get to the end of the day and go, oh man, I just can't believe I let this thing get me so off track today. That's the power of this morning process. It's why I do it every single day. There's been times where I've been so busy and I'm like, oh, I don't have time for this. That's when you especially have to do it. You want to make sure to do it so that you can get more done in four hours in a day than you would in eight hours in a day where you're still carrying that frustration, that anger, that disappointment, that sadness, whatever emotion might be triggering you, what person might be triggering you. And so you're not bringing in that self-doubt. You're not bringing in those fears of rejection when you're not willing to be present and be yourself throughout your day. So I hope you enjoyed this tapping process with me today. Uh, you can always, if you want to learn more, go check out the Tapping Solution Planner. And most importantly, if you want to have a more regular tapping practice, I highly recommend go download the Tapping Solution app. You can get it on, the, on your iPhone or Android. Go download the app. So many amazing tapping meditations in there that you can use on a daily basis uh, all the time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Tapping Solution Podcast. Until next time, keep tapping.